Um, most of the people who might be watching this, uh, this video won't have ever heard of Codafil. So what does it stand for and what does it represent? Uh, it's the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana. Uh, it's a state agency for the French language in the state of Louisiana. We're part of the Lieutenant Governor's Office in the Department of Culture. And, uh, and it's kind of strange because there's not another state agency that's quite like it in the United States. We are the, the agency for the French language in Louisiana. And it was founded in the 60s? 1968. Wow. Yeah. And what was the reason? Was it because some certain people wanted to preserve a dying language tradition or what? So, I mean, Louisiana Louisiana was founded as a colony. I mean, there were people, there were Native Americans already living here, um, but it was founded as a European colony by French speakers, by, by French Canadians, you know, and, and, and French people from France. And so it was the majority language of Louisiana for hundreds of years. And in my own family, and my family is by no means um, different, I mean, all of my friends, the family structure is basically the same. If you go to my mother's generation, she does not speak French. She understands a fair bit of it. She has little French words that come out in her English. Sometimes we don't even realize that they're French words for a little while um, because it's so normal to talk that way here. But uh, but her parents were both French speakers and her grandparents and great grandparents all the way for hundreds of years were French speakers. So it was it it, it was a slow thing that kind of came to a head in the 20th century. We realized, oh no, like this this has been cut, like this, this intergenerational transmission has been cut, and if we don't do something, the French language will, will disappear in Louisiana, which would be a tragedy because yeah. it's been here for hundreds of years. It founded, founded the, the culture here in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we talk about our cuisine, we talk about our music, these are things that are being featured right here at Festival Acadien Creole, but I mean, you can't talk about any of those things without talking about the language in the sense of the names of all of our dishes are French names, you know, and even if someone doesn't towns, speak French, the yeah, the towns, the streets, last names, you know what I mean, everyone's, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's infused in everything. Where, yeah. What's the part of um, Louisiana that French, um, where the French culture is most predominant? So, I think most people would associate that with what you call Acadiana, which is not a historical name, it's it came out of a typo in the, I want to say 60s or 70s, where someone wanted to write Acadian and they actually cool, left an A on a on a package, and they thought, oh hey, that's cool, all, it's like Acadian in Louisiana. But it is, it's a little bit, you know, there there's a, a strong Acadian influence, but there were French speakers here before the Acadian refugees arrived, and they they all, you know, everyone, it's all a mix. I just say, moi je suis, suis Louisianaise, I'm Louisiana. Like, I've got Acadian ancestors, I've got Creole ancestors, I've got all kinds of ancestors. New Orleans was founded by French speakers, Natchitoches was founded by French speakers, so there's a little pockets and other places but I think a lot of people associate it with a, a 22 and parish region called Acadiana. And I think your are colleague was saying, what are the, um, what are the characteristics of, um, of Louisiana French versus other metropolitan or other international French? Oh goodness. Is we it made, possible to say? We've made a whole like mini series on public television of just really? explaining okay. little things called Parole de la Louisiane. Uh, it's oh. on LPB. But oh, great. Um, I mean it's there there are definitely vocabulary differences uh -huh. which makes sense. A lot of flora and fauna, for right. example, is gonna use a lot of like Native American words. I mean the word for um, a raccoon, so a raccoon in, in standard French is raton laveur. But a washing they, rat. Yeah, because they wash themselves, yeah. I guess. But when when food. the French colonists got here, they said, well, quoi c'est ça? And who was already here? Native Americans. Yeah. And they said, shawi. So it's a Choctaw word. Okay. And they said, okay, it's a shawi. So that's the word for raccoon in Louisiana French is shawi. This is your main. This is your so, nez. Aujourd'hui, c'est aujourd'hui. I mean, it's, it's French. The language, the, the French language was obviously brought by the immigrants uh, several hundred years ago. And as in Quebec and other places like that, and not just with French, but with other languages that were part of a colonial experience, if we can call it that. The version of the language that went to the new country um, was a branch from that time, 1750, 1800, 1850, and it evolves in its own direction. Mm -hmm. So so is it still possible for people from Louisiana who are fluent in Louisiana French to speak rather fluidly with people from, let's say, France? Or I is that difficult? That, I got asked that question a lot when I was teaching at LSU by my students who are Louisianians who are learning French, you know, people. And I would always say it's two questions. It's a question of exposure and a question of willingness. If you've never heard people talking in a way that's different than if you've never left your little town or you've never left, mm -hmm. and that works in both directions. Sometimes mm -hmm. that works with Louisianans who maybe are only used to speaking French with just their brother and their 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 little circle or whatever. And when they hear someone from from a, a foreign French speaker, though, oh, I don't, you know, it's yeah. just too it's too much for them to get overwhelmed. And it works in the other direction too with, with people who come here and they're like, I don't even know, is it French? But it's it's exposure and it's willingness. Do they want to understand each other? And if both it certain 
particularly if the willingness is there, absolutely, I think people can understand each other. Viva. Dakota feel bad. How is it going for you guys? How is it? How is the French language uh, revival? going and how is Coda Feels work? Do you feel it's making it's, progress? It's going pretty well. I mean, we've got French Immersion has been growing significantly in the past. I mean, it's it started um, French Immersion programs where children are going to public, you know, American public school and they're learning their math and their science and their other things. But through French as the medium, not just taking a French class, but learning every day in French, their teachers talking to them in almost nothing but French. Um, that's been around since the 80s, but it's grown quite a bit, I would say, in the past. 10, 15 years. Um, we're at like 5,500 students in French immersion uh, in, in mostly public schools. Where are you Louisiana. finding the teachers? Are they Louisianians? We, are they coming from other places? We're getting Louisianians, um, but uh, we've always had a really strong relationship with um, the education departments in other countries, particularly France, Belgium, uh, Canada. A lot of them come from France. We have a really great relationship with the French um, uh, government for uh, having agreements to, to yeah. kind of loan teachers and they come here for a few years um, and kind of have the experience of, of teaching abroad and whatnot and then they go back to their, their home district. But yeah, we, we sponsor visas. Codafil is the visa sponsor for a lot of um, people to come teach in French immersion. And, and student Louisiana. exchange, do you send Louisiana kids to Europe too? We do, particularly at the college level. There's a, there's a number mm -hmm. of college exchanges. Well, I'm certainly happy to hear like when uh, walking around and just listening to people, um, the people who are speaking French, and you hear definitely that Louisiana accent, and it's nice, because I think there's a little bit of a, I, I thought, well, I, I've read about <laughs> French teachers are coming over, as you said, maybe to teach French, and I'm, I would be worried that the French that the kids would learn today would be a French French and not a Louisiana French. I mean, French. it is. It, they're learning school French in school, like which is not, guy, yeah. I think, unusual. Well, is, like, we, you know, you learn school English. And no one teaches kids y'all in, in South Louisiana in school in English, right? right? We just say y'all. Right, Dead And I, I will defend the word y'all to the Absolutely. day I die. I think it's a very and handy eight. word. And but eight. it's not something that they're learning at school kind of thing. Now, a lot of kids are going to maybe go through immersion and maybe they don't have anyone in their family who still speaks French and maybe they're maybe they're less interested in that aspect. Maybe they just really like French as a, as a global language or whatever right. and they might have a different accent but there are definitely there definitely is a, a, a significant subset a lot of them you'll see on this stage singing writing songs in French totally. in Louisiana French who the reason why they learned it you know and, and is I, because of the Louisiana French and, and their, their families and, and their heritage you know, really happy relationship I feel like between music and French in the past you know 60 years yeah. or so in that I know a lot of people who maybe either first started out being interested in the music and yeah. then they realized they needed to know what they were singing so they they right. learned French so that they actually knew what they were singing and, and could write their own songs yeah. and things like that and then vice versa I know people who learned the language and then they needed something to do in the language and so we've been talking about French this whole time but there is also another another related language in Louisiana which is Louisiana Creole sometimes okay. called Curivini oh, right. and Corey Ledet is a Zydeco musician who has been in he's been working really hard to reclaim Curivini for yeah. his family. Is it a French, French kind of Creole it's, language yeah. or what it's is it? It's a French lexifier Creole okay. so right. like the vocabulary is largely yeah. coming from wow. French um, but it has its own kind of syntax and it has its own it's different enough to be considered its own language nice um, but uh, and he's he wrote a whole album you know of original yeah. songs so. called Medica Ma um, that is his you know his he's been really engaging yeah. with so there are there are well, last question would be um, what 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 would be your aspirations for the for code of uh, so what would be your aspirations for Louisiana French for the next generation. What what would you like to see in 30 years be the case? Would you like to see everybody out here speaking French well, as their as their I home mean, language? Or? I can't I can't control everything. So I know that what I can control is I talked to this one in French and uh, and just in French and and it's it's been the already she's she's only two not quite two so she's only talking a little bit but it's already been just the joy of my life to listen to her yeah. talk, say, say sentences to me in this language that I, I had to work really hard to get back for my family and I knew if I have a kid they're gonna learn the easy way you know that for more more and more young people it's it, it goes beyond school and it, it's something that they have in their hearts you know what I mean that they can share and as you as you have this are the first generation at least in say Lafayette is about my age who did French immersion at school and so even if they they maybe still mostly spoke French at school, you know, they spoke it sometimes outside of school or whatever. Now that they have kids, I'm noticing that a lot of them put their kids in French That's immersion. Nice. Yeah. And so even if it's not 100% like the house is in French all the time, when that kid comes home from school, 
it is a little bit different than like, maybe it was for them when like, their parents were part of that lost yeah. generation like my mother who, right. who didn't really they were in between French speaking parents and these kids who had school yeah, programs yeah. so now even if they're not speaking 100% French or something at home with their kids when their kids come home and they're working on homework together they're working kind of as equals and not like oh mama's looking things up on Google Translate you know what I mean so it is a little bit more of a richer kind of ecosystem yeah. and then a lot of amazing people like this lady here who've been working for this for such a long time and giving their blood sweat and tears so that people like me have something to latch on to and we're you know we're standing on their shoulders looking at the future so I think I think what I hear from people like you and Barry is that like if y'all known you know 20 30 40 years ago or something the kind of conversations that be going on like it's 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 really there is a lot of hope Still, even yeah. if you know it, it's not going to necessarily always going to be easy, um, there's a lot of like really beautiful creativity and a lot of passion right. and a lot of attachment to this language and this culture, and that in and of itself is just is the, the base of something really promising. Very good. Yeah. Would you like to say one or two very sort of characteristic phrases in Louisiana French? No pressure. Bon, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the things a bit stereotyped, but. Les éléments sont relais. Ouais, bah, ça se passe trop souvent, là. Comme il y a une chanson qui sort et, et j'aime bien. Et comme Barry a dit aujourd'hui, dit la, le, le tout premier festival était organisé autour de la chanson de Jimmy C. Newman qui était devenue populaire et qui était populaire à ce moment-là, qui était Lâche pas la patate. Et puis quelqu'un. Quelqu'un lui a dit 50 ans plus tard, il y avait les filles, euh, il y avait les filles Balfa qui disaient « Merci à Barry, on ne comprend pas comment ça fait pour continuer comme ça autant d'années. » Et puis Barry a dit bah, « Oui, on a adopté ça comme notre devise, lâche pas la patate. » Donc c'est ça. Très bon, merci beaucoup. On ne donne pas la patate. Thank you.